Hey ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be part 2 to What If Naruto Was a Vampire. So with that being said, make sure to check out my Discord, of which I'll leave a link to in the description where you can just give me different what-if ideas and, you know, different things like that. Make sure to like and subscribe, there's not going to be a like all in this video, but nice to do it anyway. So anyway, with that being said, let's do a brief recap of what actually happened in the last part before getting in to the actual new material of the what-if. So, in the last part, we left off with Naruto kind of having an explanation of how he's going to be a vampire, and exactly, like, the different races of vampires that they're going to be. A lot of people basically said that they want Naruto to be the only vampire. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet, because I was thinking that I'm going to have the other Uzumakis be vampires too, like Karin and Nagato, just because they would be in the same race as Kushina, who is a vampire. And I made her race a vampire, so it would be pretty obvious that that would be kind of like a similar thing. So they are obviously going to be vampires, and they will have a bigger role in the actual series in terms of like vampire stuff later on in the actual episode episode part whatever you want to call it anyway with that being said naruto pretty easily defeated kakashi in the bell test and was about to begin the c rank mission to guide a bridge builder named tazuna back to his homeland to build a fucking bridge so with that being said let's get into the new material of the what if so this part is going to start off with everybody basically meeting at the gate in order to do their actual mission their first actually partially difficult mission that they're going to be doing so with that being said let's get into it after leaving through the gate, Naruto senses something. He's not really used to actually going on missions and being alert for these different things, but as Naruto's walking, he senses something, and as he keeps walking closer and closer, it's it's weird. He wasn't expecting it. It was It's just a puddle laying there in the middle of the floor. As Naruto's walking by, Kakashi turns around and notice that Naruto's just staring at the puddle in awe, wondering what's going on with it. And Kakashi looks at him and he's like, can Naruto sense the bloodlust coming from it? Is that what Naruto's sensing? He's kind of confused by this because he doesn't know exactly what's happening. Neither does Naruto at this point. He's never sensed this before. He's never actually you tried to like focus this much on, you know, his different powers. And he's wondering what's happening, why it's like this. He doesn't know exactly how to answer that question, so he'd just move on. He'd continue walking until eventually Kakashi would be attacked. Once Kakashi is obviously attacked, Naruto would be the first to jump in. He'd obviously pretty easily take down the two Chunin brothers due to him literally being stronger than Kakashi, so he easily takes them out. They are literally killed by Naruto because Naruto doesn't really have any reason to how do you how do I put it? He doesn't really have a reason to show any mercy to them. He's a vampire, and I know, he, he just wants to kill him, so he does. So with Naruto killing them, they continue on walking, and as Naruto keeps walking, he gets that same feeling again, and he doesn't know what it is. About half a mile in front of Naruto, he senses this bloodlust coming from an object, and he doesn't know why. He doesn't know what's happening. He doesn't know why he's feeling sensing this. Naruto tries to ignore it, but as he gets closer to it, it starts getting stronger and stronger before eventually Naruto realizes it. This isn't just some object, it's a person. He alerts Kakashi to this and tells him that there's a person, probably about 100 yards up to the right a little bit. So Kakashi looks forward and pulls out a Sharingan and actually sees it. There actually is a person there, you can tell because of the chakra signature, he wouldn't have been able to see it otherwise. Putting away his Sharingan, he thanks Naruto for simply continuing to walk forward, making it look as they as though they don't actually see him, st basically sitting there. Naruto continues walking forward, makes a shadow cloud, which kind of has a new meaning now, because, you know, shadows and vampires, they kind of go together. So with the shadow clone, it kind of slips off into the darkness without Zabuza actually seeing it. So as everybody continues walking forward, Zabuza would come, would basically do the whole thing. He makes his mist, and all that would still go normally. He gets inside of the middle of the circle, with Kakashi still going and blocking the sword. But, as Zabuza goes to try to basically put Kakashi inside of the water prison after their fight continues for a little bit, that's the perfect moment for Naruto's shadow clone to pop out. Popping out from under the water, it grabs Zabuza's leg and drags him under. For one, not allowing Kakashi to get captured inside of the water prison, and for two, it's holding Zabuza down under the water. Zabuza's not really able to do anything. And he's wondering what's happening, he just feels this massive pressure on his leg before a sharp pain bites him down there. He's wondering what's happening. And he looks down, now opening his eyes underwater, and he sees blood. 
He sees blood start entering the water from around the place where that sharp pain in his leg was. And then, his mind snaps, completely snapping. Zabuza starts screaming under the water as air bubbles appear all around where Zabuza's body just got dragged under, before once again resurfacing, now dead. Naruto, now Naruto Shadow Clone, now returns to the surface, holding Zabuza, basically pulling him above the water before throwing him onto the ground. Naruto Shadow Clone would dispel itself, and everybody would be looking at Naruto now. What exactly did he just do? Now, Naruto doesn't actually know exactly what just happened. He's never tried to bite people before. Or, he's bit people, but never with the intent of trying to kill them, just with the intent of get, getting a little bit of food. And he's wondering exactly what his bite can do, what he'd be able to do with this bite, and why that was so powerful, why that happened. He doesn't really know exactly what just happened with that fight, and he kind of confused, but he kind of wants to test this now. So, they all continue going on, with Kakashi not actually having to recover for such a long time this time due to not having so much Sharingan use, he only has to recover for probably a day or two, because he did take it out for a really brief amount of time. Anyway, Kakashi would then be, you know, in his recovery state while Naruto and everybody else would train. Naruto would be training with something else, he's wondering what his bite actually does to creatures and things. So, he would go out. He'd find different bodies and different things, or not bodies, but different animals and things like that. He'd grab them and he'd bite them. Sometimes he'd bite them for blood, sometimes he'd bite them with different intents in his mind. Sometimes he'd bite them to kill, and they'd obviously die, just like what happened with Zabuza. Sometimes he'd bite them with other thoughts in mind, and they would seem to completely be unable to, like, do something that Naruto didn't want them to do. Say he bit them and told them to go do something, they would have to do that. Naruto's really confused by this. Why exactly is this happening? He doesn't know exactly why this power that, or why he even has this power in the first place, but he basically puts this in the background of his mind for a moment before continuing on and walking, before coming across somebody. He comes across Haku for the first time. And he's looking at him, and he doesn't really care too much. He never saw Haku or sensed him back when he was fighting Zabuza, so he doesn't really know anything that happens. That happened. However, Haku recognizes Naruto almost immediately as the one who killed his master. He obviously would get very angry at this, and he'd charge forward at Naruto. Naruto would not have been, like, on his guard at this point, and he'd actually get a clean blow in on his face, with Naruto getting sent flying back into a nearby tree. Naruto standing up, because he got dropped down to his knees, he looks forward at Haku, wondering exactly why he just did that. As Haku, now completely frickin' bloodlusted and ready to kill Naruto, he starts charging once again, with Naruto dodging out of the way of the punch. The flurry of punches continues, with Naruto either dodging out of the way or blocking all of them with relatively no difficulty. As this continues on, Naruto starts to get a little bit annoyed at why Haku is doing this, like he didn't do anything, all he did was walk forward. So, Naruto reels back his hand, sending it forward flying into a massive, pretty, really powerful punch, sending a Haku flying. As Haku gets sent into a nearby tree, he falls to the ground. He isn't getting up anytime soon, he's knocked unconscious, with Naruto walking forward, picking him up, putting him over his shoulder. He then takes him back to the little area that they were at, and shows Kakashi and kind of explains to him what happened. With Kakashi being kind of confused, why did he just randomly attack? Anyway, now that Kakashi was fully recovered, they'd head over to the bridge. They weren't really expecting to fight anybody because, you know, Sabuzo was kind of dead at this point. They brought Haku with because they don't want him doing anything to, you know, you know um, Tab Tazuna's like wife and kids just because he attacked Naruto for no reason. They might he might do the same to them, so they bring him with. And when they eventually do arrive at the bridge, they kind of help. Tazuna actually build the bridge a little bit, just kind of waiting for, ha for Haku to actually awaken. Eventually, he would obviously awaken, and he'd look around. Seeing Naruto once again, his eyes turned into a seeping rage before charging at Naruto once again. Completely outraged at this, Naruto would be absurdly annoyed. He'd simply move, move to the side before chopping him in the neck, knocking him out once again, before looking at Kakashi, basically in a way of, what should we do next, kind of like asking a question. Kakashi would obviously not really know exactly what he wants to do with, because he doesn't know that Haku was kind of working with Zabuz. All he knows is that he's doing weird things. So, Kakashi would basically be like, hey, we might as well bring him with us. We don't want him causing any trouble for them. So, they grab him, host him over the shoulder, and they're about to leave. But as he turns around, the gang leader would show up. They all turn around, they're like, 
what is he doing here with Naruto obviously being really annoyed because the gang leader would start talking his shit. He'd start doing all that kind of stuff, and Naruto would be the first one over there. He'd immediately go straight through all of the different people there, and he'd be straight in front of the gang leader. As Naruto looks forward, looking deep into his eyes, he looks at him, and he's like, Are you some kind of an idiot, or do you just want to die? The gang leader feels a little bit of fear, but knows that he has a bunch of henchmen around him. So, signaling for them to attack Naruto, they would all do so. With Naruto simply standing there, as all the swords completely- all the swords, guns, everything like that would com- or I don't think they had guns or anything. They would basically completely bounce off of Naruto's body, not really doing any actual damage to him. Naruto, just a little bit annoyed by the tickles and pringles that he just- or the- yeah, what I just said, sorry. <laughs> that, that he just felt from all the swords hitting him, gets a little bit annoyed. And kills all of them. With a single blow. All of them die with one single swoosh of Naruto's hand. The gang leader at this point would feel an immense amount of fear, knowing that all of his, basically, comrades and everything like that were just easily taken out with relatively no difficulty, and he doesn't exactly know how that happened. Why would Naruto be so powerful? Why would he be able to be so strong and able to take on those many men? Like, he gets that he's a ninja, but are ninjas really that powerful? He basically debates this for a while before realizing that he's not going to be able to do anything. So he drops to his hands and knees, basically crying for mercy, hoping that Naruto won't kill him or do anything like that. Naruto debates whether or not he wants to kill him, but before he actually comes to that conclusion, Kakashi would actually stop him from doing anything. With Kakashi stopping him, Naruto would be like, hey, whatever, fine. So they'd end up going, and they go back to the actual frickin' village itself, bringing Haku and to um, the gang leader, what is the gang leader's name again? I don't really remember. Bringing both of them with them. So, eventually they would, once again, arrive back at the village, and they bring the two people there to the Hokage, wondering exactly what they want them to actually do. Hokage would look at him and he'd be looking at Haku, realizing that he's pretty young still, and ask where exactly they found him, what happened, and they would explain what happened with him, how he just randomly attacked Naruto for seemingly no reason. He'd allow Haku to stay, at least for the time being, but for the gang leader, he'd immediately lock him up. Eventually, Haku would awaken, and he would not immediately try to go kill Naruto again, realizing from his mistakes of getting one chap twice, realizing he has to get stronger in order to actually seek out his revenge against Naruto. So, playing along with everything, he'd try to settle into the thing of the village, before eventually finding a way that he could actually escape from it. So with Haku escaping from the village, Naruto would obviously notice this, but he doesn't really care too much, knowing that Haku's way too weak to even be able to do anything to him. Anyway, some amount of time would pass, and Kakashi would recommend that the three of them would actually take the actual tuning exams. So, they would obviously be pretty excited by this, knowing that they can get a higher rank, and they would end up actually being like, yeah, that sounds like a, sounds like a pretty cool idea. And they would end up do it being like, okay, sure, well, we'll do the tuning exams. So, with them starting the tuning exams, starting with the written exams, everybody would pass it pretty easily. Naruto's much smarter than his original self, and could, everybody else could do pretty much the exact same thing that they would have in the original. So, now the next part of the actual tuning exams would be the Forest of Death. However, that's where I'm going to leave this part off. So, I'll see you guys in the next part. Peace out. Bye.